Hello, and welcome to this presentation. My name is Amy Northcutt, and I'm the Application Specialist for the Engineering segment here at Trimble. Today we'll be talking about some of the benefits of including rebar in your Tecla Structures model. So to start, you can model rebar either using built-in components from the Applications and Components catalog, or by modeling customized bar groups. Within each of the custom components, you have a variety of fields that you can manipulate in order to make the custom component suit your current situation. Things like hooks, clear cover, and bar size and grade can all be set from within the custom component. All of these settings can be used again later, like I'm using the SF1 setting here on the beam for this grade beam. These settings can also be saved in your firm folder for use on future projects or in general to set up your company standards. In addition to the custom components, you can also model individual bar groups. To do this, you can start from the Concrete tab on the ribbon and browse to the Rebar command. Within the Rebar dialog, you have the opportunity to set the rebar size and grade, the hooks on each end, as well as the cover dimensions. In order to start modeling the bar, you simply trace the shape of the bar in your model and then choose two points to determine the range of the bar group. On the Group tab of the Rebar Properties box, you can also set the spacing or the number of bars in the group. Last but not least, you can also specify the leg length on each end of the bars rather than the cover distance that you've modeled between the end of the bar and the handle that you've created within Tecla Structures. So once you've got all your rebar modeled, whether it be through the use of custom components or individual bar groups or a combination of both, chances are there's going to be changes to be made. The good news is the rebar that you've got modeled is associative, meaning that whether you change the model or the concrete with direct modification or by changing the profile size, the rebar will update automatically. At any stage throughout this process, I can always come in and run a clash check. I can select the members that I want to run the clash check with, go to my manage tab on the ribbon and select the clash check command. Running the clash check will give me a list of all the clashes that I see within the model and by selecting one, that area will be highlighted in the model and I can come in and see how I'd like to rectify this clash. In this case, I'm going to use direct modification to adjust the cover distance on my slab dowels. Once I've done this, I can rerun my clash check to make sure that all the clashes that I expected to be have been resolved. And I can of course zoom into my model and make sure that that clash in particular has been taken care of to my satisfaction. Now that you're confident in your model, you can leverage this information in a variety of different ways. The first of which being through the use of the organizer. The organizer is a tool that allows me to create quick automated reports, such as QTOs of my rebar material. And because I've gone through and essentially built my project in the model before it gets onto site, I can be confident that, that the bend table and tonnages that I'm getting out of my report are accurate and ready to be sent to the contractor or any other members of the project team. Within the organizer, it's easy to customize my reports by grouping by a certain attribute or displaying different columns of information for each member. I can then export this directly to Excel for use in a variety of different manners. Now I can also create either engineering drawings or shop drawings of this rebar using all of the information that I've already modeled in within Tecla Structures. The population of all of my rebar marks can be automated through the use of filters, and what we call object level settings at Tecla. The bend table can of course also be automated to display all of the bars that are shown on this particular drawing. Sections and details are also intelligent, meaning that they're linked to the plan with which they're cut from. So when the plan is updated or the geometry in the model is updated, both the plan and section view or detail view will be updated automatically within each of your drawings, along with the bend table of course. Because you've created these drawings based on the model, you can be assured that they're accurate and up to date. In addition, you know that your bars are going to fit once they get out to site because they fit within the model. Once I'm ready to release my bars for fabrication, I can use the rebar export extension available on the Tecla Structures warehouse in order to create native ASA or Soule files. In order to do this, I can either select the rebar that I'd like to release in the model or through the rebar export tool, I can use a model filter. I want to give the rebar export a name as well as a file location. I can also tag the bar with the release status UDA upon export. This can be set as assigned, released, fabricated, or placed. 
and upon filling out all the relevant release information, I can simply click Export Selected to export the file to the previously selected location. And as always, I can then browse to that file to open it up and check it before I send it off to the fabricator. All right, well that about wraps up our rebar workflow here. Thanks for taking the time to watch today, and I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Tuesday Tips.